Good morning. It is time for our regular weekly marketing coffee break. Today, I'm going to be talking about social media engagement benchmarks. I've had quite a few clients in the past just two weeks kind of wanting to understand if what they're doing on social media is working. Obviously, if you look at one or two individual posts that you make, and the engagement rates on those posts may not look so good. You know, maybe you only have what to you seems like a few people engaging. And so how do you know if that few people is a great number? Is it a bad number? So regularly, I pour through these types of benchmark reports that some of the best companies out there are doing regarding social media. I'm not making these reports myself because it takes a lot of time and resources and there's plenty of people who are doing them and they do it very well so it's not something that I need to personally do and I always read more than one because different reports use different industries they use different companies to make the comparisons and so the data you get can be a little bit different although i do find that across the board it's pretty much in line with each other but i always want to keep up to date and so i do review a lot of them and this latest one had some really good info this one is from rival iq and they did their 2018 social media industry benchmark report and it's really worth reading, not only because of the insights they provide, but also they have comparison graphs in their article and additional links. One of them, they share a month-by-month -month comparison breakdown, which can drill down to the different industries they covered. And they have a head-to-head -head comparison tool where you can put in your social media profile, your business profile, and compare it to a competitor's business profile and kind of see how you stack up against the competition. So some really good links in that article. And I will post the link to their article right here down in the uh, comments area so that you can go view it yourself. But first, I want to talk about why social media engagement rate is important and why I don't focus so much on number of followers and also why engagement rate alone still isn't enough. So when you think about the algorithms used by the social media platforms that choose what posts and how often they're shown to the followers, understanding engagement rate in that is pretty key. A more engaging post is going to in turn be shown to even more people on the platform. So, you know, the algorithm sees something is getting a lot of attention and it's going to people. That's where engagement is key. If a post isn't getting engagement, if it has zero engagement, it's going to keep hearing crickets. So I did a poll attached to this live video if you're watching on Facebook asking you which one you think the social media platform prefers. Example A, I make a post and I have 10 followers and all 10 people engage in the post. Now that's a 100% engagement rate. Realistically, that's not going to happen, but I like to use nice round numbers when we're doing these comparisons. So example A, 10 people following and all 10 people engage. Example P, B, the exact same post I have a thousand followers and 10 people engage. That's a 1% engagement rate. Which of those two examples do you think the social media platform is going to show to more people? A, 10 followers and 10 engaged. B, a thousand followers and 10 engaged. We all know it's gonna be example A. The greater engagement rate is going to get more traction in the long run. That's not to say you don't want to gather followers, but what you want to gather is quality followers, people who actually want to be there, actually care about the messages that you're sharing. Those are the people who are going to be more likely to engage, but that's the people you want anyway. You don't want to be trying to 
to sell your service or your product to somebody who's really not interested. So it used to be that, you know, you wanted followers, 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 you could pay to go out and have, you know, bots follow your account, but that's not effective anymore. But also a quick caveat. Engagement is usually a like, a comment, a share. And those are great and they're even critical for awareness, which is an important piece of your marketing strategy. But they aren't the end all be all for actually making sales because that revolves around them going beyond just engaging with a post and actually visiting your website, picking up the phone and calling, clicking on you know a product you have for sale, whatever that is, to move them along further in your marketing funnel towards a sale. So while you do focus on engagement, and if you don't have a high level of engagement yet, you want to start implementing some strategies to increase that engagement and do some testing and do some experimenting. And I'll have a couple of the insights found from this report by Rival IQ in just a moment. So you wanna start there. But as you get that engagement ramping up, you also wanna make sure that you're focusing on things you can do to actually take that engagement and drive it into return on investment. So some of the findings from their benchmark report. And if you're geeky and into data, I highly recommend you delve into the report. Again, I'll share the link in a moment. And it can even be more helpful if you're in one of the specific industries that this report covered, which is fashion, food and beverage, health and beauty, higher education, home decor, hotels and resorts, influencers, which was interesting to see it added this year, media, nonprofit, and sports teams. That industry-specific data can be even more valuable if you're in that industry. So some of the favorite highlights I found, I'm only sharing the general across industry highlights. Facebook engagement rate. The median engagement rate for Facebook business pages across all the industries that they reviewed was 0.16%. So roughly one-tenth of one percent. And it's important to understand the distinction when you're looking at percents with you know, decimal places that you wanna be understanding that you're comparing if you show you have one percent, but they're showing a 0.16% that you're comparing apples to apples and understanding there's as one tenth of one percent and make sure that the way you have pulled your data and calculated your percentage is the same. Um, so food and beverage and influencers have the highest engagement rate, really not surprising. And influencers are all about engaging their community and food and beverage, you know, who's not engaging, especially when you're hungry and you see a great photo come by of food from your favorite restaurant, you're going to give it a like, you know, you can't help it. So um, they have the highest engagement rate on Facebook at 0.24%, so two-tenths of 1%. And media actually had the lowest engagement rate at 0.08%, which is less than one-tenth of one-tenth of 1%. One the math is getting beyond me this early in the morning. I haven't had enough coffee. Um, and that's actually a bit more surprising with media. They have the lowest engagement rate, even though they posted the most times per day. So that also shows you that the frequency of your posting isn't always going to help. Rival IQ's report had three main strategies that they found increased engagement across all of these industries, and it's nothing you haven't heard before. It was a consistent brand look and feel. That's probably one of the hardest ones that some of my clients struggle with. Remembering that your audience follows you for a reason and giving them a good reason to engage. So solid strategies, no matter which platform you're on, but good to keep in mind what they found for Facebook in particular. Instagram engagement rate. The media, Median engagement rate for Instagram business profiles across all the industries that they viewed was 1.73%. You can see that's noticeably higher than Facebook and 
across the board one of the best engagement rates of the three platforms that they reviewed. Higher education. So higher education has been studying. You see the pen I did there. They actually have the highest engagement rate on Instagram with a whopping 3.39%. So that's not triple the overall engagement rate over on Facebook. That's 300 times the percent. So 3.39% engagement rate on Instagram for higher education. Compare that to fashion, which you think would have a good one. But even though they had the second most postings per day, they only see a 0.92% engagement rate. So again, the number of times you post may not be as critical as to what you're posting. Rival IQ found, again, some strategies specifically for Instagram that made the biggest results was posting regularly and frequently, capitalizing on really iconic images, and including user-generated content. This is the only platform that they specifically recommended user-generated content, and there are some best ways to do that. We won't delve into all of that, but user-generated content made a difference on Instagram, so it's something worth Twitter's engagement rate. Interestingly, Twitter had the lowest rate across all three platforms. Median for all industries was point zero four six percent so less than one half of one tenth of one percent hotels and resorts had the highest engagement rate with point zero seven two percent and media again despite having the most number of posts per day had the lowest at point zero one three percent they found on Twitter the engagement numbers are constantly shifting, but some of the best strategies are remembering that conversations on Twitter matter. So tweeting back and forth with others. On Twitter, less can actually be more. So frequency of posting may not be as important. And mentions can widen your audience and drive greater engagement. Again, overall, none of these strategies are anything surprising, but in general, what they recommend and what many others recommend and what you wanna keep in mind is you want to know your audience, you wanna understand the platform that you're using in each platform's individual unique strength, and then Customize your post to play to that strength. Again, for example, on Twitter, it would be how can you have start a conversation? On Instagram, it might be a really iconic image, really eye catching. And then always be testing your strategies and reviewing your data and your insights. I'm curious, did any of these engagement numbers really surprise you most? I know on a couple of my clients that I've pulled this benchmark data and provided to them in the past couple of weeks, they were concerned with their low Instagram engagement rate, but actually found that across the board, theirs was more than double of this industry benchmark. So they're actually looking really good. Now, one individual post may not get as much engagement, but that's also valuable data to have to find out which of your posts are performing least best and which are performing best. I was most surprised to find Twitter's engagement rate so very low. Did anything surprise you? Do you have any questions in particular? Interested to know, so drop your comment below or shoot us a message and we will answer your question and maybe even discuss it on a later marketing coffee break. So again, I'm going to post the link to Rival IQ's report. I recommend if you're interested, you go review that. They had some other great, like I said, graphs in there and some links to some other 
parts of the report that delve more in depth into monthly breakdowns and industry breakdowns. So it's really great information. Go check it out and we will see you next week.